Hey, hey, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is my normal pantry restock. We're going to be doing some canning, prepping some lunches for the week, cooking from scratch, and sharing with you some other items that I'm making from scratch, scratch to stock my pantry with. If you like videos like this, please leave it a big thumbs up. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoy today's video. Let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Lay all our love before him with all of our faith. He is the change within us. There is a light. Let him lead the way. Lift our so to start out today's recipes, we're going to be making some sourdough discard noodles. So you're going to need some sourdough discard or starter, two eggs, and some flour. If you don't have sourdough discard or starter, I know there's many recipes to make noodles um, without that. And so you could do that as well. Um, I could try to find a good recipe and link it down below for you guys. But this is what I'm doing today. I know um, sourdough is something that's coming back and a lot of people are really getting into it. And so I'm excited to make these and spoiler alert, these were absolutely delicious. It's something I will make again and definitely buy less of at the store because they were just that good. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put my sourdough discard into my stand mixer. I just measured it out and I did a half a cup of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do two eggs and two cups of flour. And once I have all of that in the mixer, I'm just going to go ahead and let that knead, let it mix, let it form the dough ball. And then we will be ready to start letting um, rolling the dough out and getting the noodles cut and then letting them dry. Now that the dough has rested for a little bit, I am going to go ahead and just take my rolling pin, flour my surface, and roll this out to the size that I want and the thickness that I want my noodles to be. I wanted mine to be a little bit more thin because we were going to use this for spaghetti, so I wanted mine to be a tad bit more thin, but depending on your liking, you could make them a little bit thicker. Um, you could also cut them into different shapes to make like lasagna noodles or you know smaller bite-sized noodles if you didn't want to use them for something like chicken alfredo or spaghetti or something like that you could definitely you know make a variety of different kinds of noodles but once i have all of this rolled out and ready to go i'm just going to go ahead and take my pizza cutter because i do not have a noodle cutting machine or noodle maker anything like that i only have a pizza cutter or a knife so i figured the pizza cutter would be a little bit easier now not all my noodles were exactly the same size some were a little bit thicker some were a little bit thinner but it's turned still turned out really good so it just goes to show you don't need all of the fancy gadgets to make the noodles but i'm just going up and down back and forth and cutting these um, to the best of my ability trying to keep it straight and then once all these are cut i'm actually going to hang them to dry i know some recipes have you boil them right away but um, the one that i'm actually following today has me hang dry them for about three to four hours and so you'll see here in a minute i'm gonna lay them in a couple different places so that way they can dry and i can work on getting some other things done Thank you. 
Alrighty, now they are all hanging to dry, and you can you can see I don't have nothing fancy to make noodles at all. Um, they're literally just drying, resting on cups and spatulas and a coat hanger, and I'm just making do with what I have. But now I'm going to go ahead and get some chicken salad made up for the week. This is one of my husband's favorite lunches, and it's so easy to make, and I was already making chicken on this night anyway, so I just took out an extra breast to cook up and put into this so usually all I put in mine is about a half an onion one whole apple diced I do one stalk of celery almonds and then I put one chicken breast in there and so I'm just gonna get all of this cut up and put in my little container over here once I get it all chopped up and put into my container we will go ahead and add the seasonings and sauce So for my chicken salad, I like to use Dijon mustard and mayo. I put about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard in there and three spoonfuls of mayo. We like ours a little bit more saucy, but if you don't like it that saucy, you can always dull down how much mayo you put in there. It's all about your liking and what works for you and your taste, but we like ours a little bit more saucy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that in, get it all combined, and then we will be ready to have this for the week.
We like to put ours on croissants and it is just so, so good. And it's a really nice, fresh um, lunch. But now we're gonna go ahead and work on some canning. I have these potatoes and these carrots that have been in my fridge for a little while. And I wanna go ahead and just get these preserved and get these put up. They have a couple spots on them that aren't looking so great so i'm gonna go ahead and cut that off peel them and then we're gonna work on getting these canned up and put back into the pantry area and that way we have some fresh produce preser preserved for the winter and the upcoming months For these carrots and potatoes, I am just slicing the carrots into rounds and then I'm just cutting the potatoes into um, about one inch squares. Nothing fancy, you could make your potatoes into fry slices, you could even make the carrots into slices, just depends on your liking and what you would want to use them for. But I only ended up having two pints of the carrots, so I just went ahead and did them into just little sliced rounds and then cubed the potatoes. And once I peeled my potatoes, I let them sit in a um, cold sink bath and kind of let some of that um, milky film come off the potatoes a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing as I'm chopping them. I'm going to put them in a bowl of water because whenever you let them soak for a little while after chopping them, all of that milkiness comes out of the potatoes into the water in the bowl so that way when you put them in your canning jars and you can them, they don't come out as cloudy looking and it's just something I learned recently and I actually really like doing it that way so that way my water is not milky looking in my canning jars. Not that it matters, it doesn't really change the flavor of the potatoes at all. It just makes them look a little bit nicer on the shelf and as you guys know my canning shelf is in my living room, um, dining room, you know, in between because my house is just wide open um, and so it's something that's displayed so I do you know take a little bit of pride and just try to make my jars look nice and all the things so now that those have soaked and I've rinsed them off I'm going to go ahead and add these to my jars. To each of my jars, I'm just adding a fourth a teaspoon of salt, even to my quart jars. We don't like ours super salty, so I'm just adding a little bit of salt just for the preservation process of it. Um, but that's all I'm going to do, and then I'm going to pour some hot water over the top of them, get the lids and rings put on, and then they will be ready to go in the pressure canner.
In my canning process, I try to be diligent about remembering to debubble. There gets to be a lot of bubbles down at the bottom that you want to get out so there's no extra air pockets. And then I wipe my rings with just a damp paper towel that is damp with white vinegar. So I go ahead and do that, put my warm lids on, and then put my rings on and they will be all set to go into the pressure canner and I'm just going to pressure can all of these together so that way I have more put in my pressure canner instead of less since this is small batch canning which sometimes is just how it works out. It actually works out for me a little bit better especially with kids. I don't have all the time in one day with young kids to be in the kitchen canning huge batches so when I do get to can I like to do smaller batches at a time and I also like to not let anything go to waste so I like to make sure that I'm using up everything that is in my freezer and in my fridge and if that means canning it before it goes bad then I will most definitely do that. And also if you guys don't remember or don't know I am an affiliate with 4Jars so if you are somebody who likes to can and you're looking for a good canning lid I definitely recommend 4Jars. There is always a link down in my description box if you want to check them out. My link and my discount code, which is Bethany10, I will put that here on the screen, um, will get you 10% off your entire purchase, and that even includes their sales. So they have the best lids. Definitely check them out if you are interested. But now let's go ahead and make some homemade pizza dough. I am using my sourdough discard. This is another great way if you have sourdough discard to use it up. And this was seriously the best pizza dough we have ever had. We loved it so much. My husband even complimented that it was one of the best pizzas he's ever had and that meant a lot to me being that it was homemade and um, it was just made with my sourdough discard. So I will leave the recipe linked below but I went ahead and added my discard to the bowl. Um, it does call for a tad bit of yeast to help it rise a little bit faster and then of course your flour, salt, and water. Now that it is done mixing, I'm just going to go ahead and take my bowl off of my mixer, knead up the dough just a tad bit with my hands and shape it, and then I'm going to put it in a greased bowl to sit for a while to rise and just let it, let the yeast do its thing in there. So I put a wet towel over the top of it and then the lid and just set it on the stove and just let it rise up there to get all warm and fluffy and happy and once it is done we can go ahead and spread it out on our pizza sheet you can see how this looked it was absolutely delicious and so i'm going to go ahead and top it with marinara sauce that i made homemade and canned back in september so i'm going to go ahead and put that on there and then i just topped it with any cheese and toppings that we had which was pepperoni some colby jack cheese and some parmesan cheese underneath there and then i baked it and you guys seriously if you get the chance to try this if you have sourdough discard or starter please do because it was delightful Someone did you wrong I can see it in your eyes It's like you're fine 